but how does everyone else travel all the time whenever they want? Just imagine for a few seconds that you're able to go wherever you want to travel, whenever you want, for as long as you want. We've been blessed for the last 10 years to be able to live this lifestyle. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how we do that and how you can do it too. Hi, my name is Aaron. and this is Plan Free, the channel that illustrates a location-independent lifestyle and shows you how to get it. If you're new to the channel and you like what we're talking about here, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. When it comes to traveling the world full-time on a budget or with little money, the lifestyle is built on two foundational ideas. One is how you're making money, and the second is how you're making your money go further. We'll explore those two different points and show you how to create a full-time freedom lifestyle. Now regarding making money, there's the old tried and true that a lot of people will use and that is working a part-time or a full-time job. Welcome to Baston Robbins. Would you like to try our mango fruit blast? Living below your means, saving up a bunch of money and then going and spending that money on a trip. While many people have used this technique effectively to travel the world in short-term durations, when you want to graduate to traveling full-time, you'll have to move on to different ways of creating income. You'll have to remove the location dependence manner of how you make money. You'll now want to search out income producing methods that you could produce from anywhere in the world. One idea of location independent incomes might be to monetize a skill that you already have in a freelance manner. Whether that skill be writing or life coach, fitness, nutritional guidance, photography. Come on Austin, give it to me, go, go. Over you could monetize these skills through a website like Fiverr. This video isn't sponsored by Fiverr, but I guess it could be. I'm sure there are many other skills that I left out that you could monetize in a location independent manner and many other websites in addition to the one that I mentioned. If there are any digital nomads out there that are successfully monetizing skills, go ahead and add them to the comments below on what's working for you currently and let's start the conversation. Further to point number one, seek out and learn ways to make money online. And that could be anything from teaching English online. You could create informative content on a platform like, I don't know, YouTube or something. You could start your own product line, offer tech support, fashion consultant. Cancel, so hot right now. There is really no limitation outside of our imagination here. Once you've begun to create location independent income sources, you can turbocharge your freedom by living below your means. What that means is spending less income than you're producing, and this will really magnify the amount of freedom you can enjoy and the duration of time you can enjoy it for. And that note leads me to the second kind of foundational idea on how to build a location independent lifestyle and be able to travel the world full time on a budget if you want to. And that idea is how do we make our money go further? And like I just mentioned, once we begin to spend less than we make, it creates a perpetual savings account, and in our case, a perpetual traveling account. It creates a buffer so that if our income ever fluctuates for any reason, we have a little bit of an insurance policy in place where we can just keep enjoying a full-time travel lifestyle if that's what we want to do. In the area of stretching our dollars and making our money go further, there's three kind of main travel expenses that we want to pay attention to trying to reduce everywhere that we can. We're going to seek out savings in these areas. The first and largest of these areas is transportation. How to get from point A to point B. First and foremost, let's talk about flights. You always want to give some time and attention in attempting to reduce the cost of your flights. I'll give you some brief suggestions on how to do this, but likely we'll create a whole separate video going into more detail on how to reduce your costs on flight expenses. Some of the tips we've learned along the way throughout the years is the longer you can purchase your flight in advance, 
the better prices you will receive. So if you can shop early, if you know you're going somewhere, do that to save money. Another technique is to utilize low cost or discount airlines and or websites. In our region, we use a website called Cheapo Air. And I know uh, other travelers from different parts of the world talk about other websites. So if any of you out there are listening to this and you use websites in addition to Cheapo Air to get discount on your flights, go ahead and please add them in the comments below to help the other people out as well. When you are on these websites, if you have the ability to open an incognito window so that the websites cannot track the region that you're shopping from. This can also be a money saver. Obviously a VPN would go even further in helping you do this. Once you've arrived in your destination, there's going to be on ground transportation costs that you'd want to attempt to save money on. So things like taxis, buses, private transportation, rickshaws, whatever it may be, boats. You always wanna shop around and see if you can reduce your costs on those transportation methods. There's a few ways that we've done this over the years. And honestly, most of the credit here would go to my wife and that she's very friendly and she makes instant friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Many times we've been in an airport and it's obvious that there's a group of people going to the same place we are. And uh, she'll offer to split a taxi or share the costs in an excursion and this greatly reduce the cost for us and for them. So it's a win-win. Oftentimes when we book an Airbnb or a private apartment, she'll also ask them, oh, does it come with a pickup and drop off to and from the airport? And many, many times these people will agree to that, even though it's not really included in their ad. And it's another way for us to save money. Further to this, when the opportunity presents itself, we are going to choose options that are less expensive. So for example, we will choose a taxi if that's the only option. But if there are other options, for example, like uh, ride sharing apps or other private apps that are less expensive, we will choose that. When we lived in Bali for five months, for example, there was a few different options for transportation. Taxi was probably one of the most expensive. Then you would graduate down to a Gojek or a Grab, a car would be less expensive than a taxi. Going one step further, if only one of us had to go somewhere, let's say the grocery store, we might use Grab or Gojek for a scooter. Uh, so the driver shows up, you jump on the back of the scooter. I can get 70 miles to the gallon on this hog. And that's another way to save even more on transportation. Oftentimes in your destinations, you'll want to go on these popular excursions to uh, some of the most desirable tourist destinations. And frequently that involves hiring a private driver. Well, again, along this idea, if you can share that private driver with one or two more people, hopefully that you get along with, you can share out the costs, creating a win-win for everybody and also everyone saves at the same time. Another example is let's say you're landing at an airport, but your final destination is six, eight, 10 hours away. Uh, oftentimes you can get like pre-arranged transportation from the airport to your final destination. But one thing that's helped us save a lot of money over the years is we'll check to see if there's a bus line running. We've specifically taken advantage of this in the two times we lived in Costa Rica and the one time we lived in Panama, where we saved hundreds of dollars going with the public bus line route than we would have going over the taxi or the Uber route from the airport to our destination. All right, last tip on ground-based transportation is if you're staying in, in a country or location for months at a time, consider buying a car or scooter and reselling it at the end of your stay. We've done this several times over the years. We've done it in Panama, in uh, Honduras, we've done it in Curaçao and Aruba. We've purchased these vehicles, driven them for the time that we've stayed, and then resold them back uh, to someone living there at the end of our stay. Oftentimes we're able to acquire transportation for six months for sometimes no money at all, depending on what we resell it for, or sometimes it costs us a few hundred dollars for six months worth of transportation through buying it privately. So keep that in your toolbox. The second area of travel related expenses that you'd wanna to look to save money within is accommodations. 
So first and foremost, now that you're going to be traveling the world for longer durations and maybe even full time, you'd want to sort of get away from the resorts and the hotels. These kind of places are fantastic for someone that's going on holidays for 10 days or two weeks and they just want to like unplug, decompress and be waited on for the time that they're on holidays. Maybe that's their only holiday for the year. But for you, staying longer for months, maybe years, maybe ongoing, that's an absolute guaranteed way to obliterate your budget and your money and go broke. So we're going to get off of the hotels and the resorts and we're going to start to explore other more economical options for accommodations that exist out there. Obviously hostels have been very popular and they've been around a while so chances are you've heard of them or there's probably a million and five videos about them on YouTube so I won't go into detail on those here. Another option that's become very popular is couch surfing and I think uh, there's a website of that name that you can check out and essentially what it is or means is that someone offers you an extra piece of furniture or an extra room for free uh, and offer you accommodations that way while you're staying in their country. If there's any of you out there that have had uh, experiences with hostels and couch surfing, uh, positive ones that you'd like to share in the comment section, go ahead and do so and help the other people that might be considering these methods. Again, the overall idea in this section of saving money on travel expenses is going to be moving from the hotels and the resorts moving away from those into more local and private accommodations like apartments, suites, spare rooms, house sitting arrangements, guest suites or guest houses. Casitas are very popular in Central America. Another option for some of you might be the house sitting arrangement. There are several websites out there in our region anyway that you pay a small fee annually to be a member of and it basically matches up people that are looking to have someone come in, supervise and take care of their home while they're away with people that have the flexibility and the willingness to do that. So it's a win-win scenario. A couple of the websites that we've been a member of for a while in our region would be uh, mindmyhouse.com and trustedhousesitters.com. You may have different house sitting websites in your region. In fact, if there's any of you out there that have done house sitting in the past, and know of some other websites that I didn't mention, go ahead and add them in the comments below. From a personal experience standpoint, Lori and I have had multiple positive experiences house sitting for a variety of time frames. We've done house sits anywhere from four days to six months. So for example, we did a six month house sit in Costa Rica. We also did a six month house sit in Panama where we looked after kind of a farm scenario for six months. We've also done many shorter duration house sits. For example, we did three different house sits in Australia last year uh, for anywhere between, I think it was about one to three weeks. I will say a couple of things about house sitting that I think it's important for you to know. Essentially what you're doing in most cases is you're actually pet sitting for people. So it could just as easily be called trustedpetsitters.com. I'm not sure we've ever even seen a house sit uh, offer that didn't include pets. And so you'd wanna be aware of the probability of that going into it. The other thing you'd wanna do is sort of know your value and your worth before you're entering into discussions on the house sitting arrangement. Some, but not all homeowners are going to try to see how much they can get from you in exchange for free housing and accommodations. You'd want to sort of be mindful of how much time and effort you want to be putting into their home arrangement above and beyond looking after their pets in exchange for free housing. What this does is create the ability to negotiate on a one-to-one -one basis on how many things you'd be willing to do in exchange for housing for free before you would start to discuss perhaps being paid for doing some of the services that the homeowners are asking. And the customization of the house sitting arrangements allow for this flexibility. So you can negotiate a lot of the times uh, and come up with something that's a win-win for both parties. Over the years, we had to learn the hard way a little bit. Uh, what was sort of our limit of free services that we would provide for homeowners and when and what point we would start to ask for remuneration. Early on in our house sitting experience, we were accepting basically all offers because it was new and awesome. But we've learned over time to become uh, a little bit more choosy and picky when it comes to accepting house sits and knowing what your limitations are. 
Because remember, your goal is to travel and enjoy the world full time, not be managing and supervising someone's property full time. What other techniques are you all using out there currently that is reducing your expenses on your accommodation costs when it comes to traveling the world full time? All right, the third main point where you can look to reduce your traveling costs is going to be food. And it's a similar idea to accommodations where you'd want to be mindful and move away from restaurants and resort food choices and more into local type food choices. It's kind of like when in Rome, do as the Romans do. But in this case, it's like go to where the locals are eating and eat there. If you begin to eat like a local and eat what they're eating, you'll save big time money on your food costs. So sort of tying in with your accommodations, a lot of the times now, because you're staying for a longer time and you've secured private accommodations, they'll oftentimes come with a kitchen. And in fact, that's another little tip for you is look for accommodations that you can cook food in. Cooking your own food in your own accommodations will be a big money saver for you. Explore the markets and the grocery stores that the locals favor and do your grocery shopping there. Find out where the most popular street food is that's favored by the locals. Try it out. Usually it's some of the best food available in the whole country. And again, oftentimes it's a very economic alternative to eating out in a fancy restaurant. Now, if you've got the means to go ahead and eat out in fancy restaurants all the time while you're traveling the world, by all means, go ahead and do that. But for most of us, eating out and enjoying a restaurant will be an infrequent luxury. And most of the time we'll be concentrating on shopping and eating local, preparing our own meals. And these things add up to huge savings, allowing us to enjoy more travel for a longer time. Another option for you to consider as far as getting you to these international places that you'd like to travel on a very low cost is consider identifying organizations that you can volunteer for that will accommodate you and feed you in exchange for your volunteer efforts once you get there. Lori and I haven't personally done this, but I think it's probably a very effective way to reduce your costs in relation to traveling. If any of you out there are listening to this and you've had positive experiences with volunteering in international locations, please go ahead and add them to the comments below so that other people can learn from your experiences. As I mentioned before, we've had the good fortune of living a location independent lifestyle for 10 years and counting now, using the techniques that I've talked about in the video. My name is Air and this is Plan Free. If you like what we're talking about on this channel, click the like button, subscribe, and click the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. If you got some value out of the things we talked about, please consider sharing this video on your personal Facebook page. Perhaps someone else could value from it as well. Thanks again for watching. We appreciate you being here. We'll see you again soon in the next video. Bye for now.